Hi everyone, um, it's Mr. Hill coming to you from my home studio right here. Um, I miss you all so much and I just want to say I hope you and your family are staying healthy and safe. Um, I can't wait till we're back in the studio together, but for now I'm excited that we can connect virtually. Um, so for today, we're going to actually start off by reading this awesome book called The Fantastic Jungles of Henry Rousseau. Henri Rousseau wants to be an artist. Not a single person has ever told him he is talented. He's a toll collector. He's 40 years old. But he buys some canvas, paint, and brushes, and he starts painting anyways. Why? Because he loves nature. Because when he strolls through the parks of Paris, it's like the flowers open their hearts, the trees spread their arms, and the sun is a blushing ruby all for him. Henri can't afford art lessons, so he has to be his own teacher. He goes to the Louvre and examines the satiny paintings of his favorite artists. To learn about anatomy, he studies, he studies photographs and illustrations from postcards, magazines, and catalogs. One day, Henri reads about a big art exhibition. He puts his canvases in a handcart and wheels them to the building where the show will be held. He's 41 years old, and this is the first time he'll display his work. He can hardly wait to hear what the experts will say. Mean things. That's what most of them write. But Henri snips out the articles anyways, and he pastes them in a scrapbook. Henri walks around the city, gathering ideas for his pictures. He goes to the World's Fair, where a man named Eiffel has built a lattice tower of metal risings several hundred feet into the air. What thrills Henri most about the fair's exhibits of villages from distant lands? They remind him of adventure, stories he loved when he was a boy. Days later, Henri can still picture the plants and animals from faraway places. He holds his paintbrush to the canvas. A tiger crawls out. Lightning strikes and wind whips the jungle grass. Sometimes Henri is so startled by what he paints that he has to open the window to let in some air. Every year, Henri goes back to the art exhibition to show new paintings. He fusses over the canvases and retouches them until the last minute. And every year the art experts make fun of him. They say it looks like he closed his eyes and painted with his feet. Henri keeps painting and learning. In the fall, he collects leaves from the cemetery to sketch. He spends hours drawing at the Jardin des Plantes, where, oh, happiness, a gardener sneaks him into the hothouses. Towering palms spread their giant fans, tropical plants fruit and flower into garlands, rockets, and rosettes of color. When Henri walks through the glass doorway, it's as though he enters into a dream. It's like he is someone else completely. One day, Henri paints a still desert night, bathed in moon glow. He sees a gypsy sleeping, a lion creeps up, but does no harm. Once again, he takes his work to the art show. This time, perhaps, he'll please the experts. His pulse races. The experts say he paints like a child. If you want to have a good laugh, one of them writes, go see paintings by Henri Rousseau. By now, Henri is used to the nasty critics. He knows his shapes are simpler and flatter than everyone else's, but he thinks that makes them lovely, and he spends all he earns on art supplies and pays for his bread and coal with landscapes and portraits. In the afternoon, he takes off his frayed smock and gives music lessons. His home is a shabby little studio where one pot of stew must last the whole week, but every morning, he wakes up and smiles at his pictures. Henri turns 61 years old. Because of his poverty, he'll never travel to a real jungle, but it doesn't matter. He sees one before him, clear as day. For weeks, he fills in his jungle, tenderly shaping every fern, every frond, every blade and leaf. As always, when Henri finishes the paintings, he takes it to the exhibition. Many experts mock him. One says only cavemen would be impressed by his art. But this time, several artists disagree. 
The artists are much younger than Rousseau and are already well known. They befriend him. And whenever Henri has money to spare and stages a concert in his little studio, all the artists come. Along with the grocer, locksmith, and other folks from the neighborhood, they listen to Henri's students and friends play their musical instruments. Henri gives the shiniest, reddest apple to the children. One night, a well-known artist named Picasso throws a banquet for Henri. The old man sits upon a makeshift throne. Poets recite poems for him, guests sing songs, and make speeches. Henri plays his little violin, and people dance to the music. His heart floats like a hot air balloon above the fields. Towards the end of his life, Henri makes a remarkable painting called The Dream, his biggest ever. As he does every year, he displays it at the exhibition and anxiously awaits the reviews. A famous poet writes, I don't think anyone will laugh this year, and few people do. A hundred years later, the flowers still blossom, the monkeys still frolic, and the snakes keep slithering through Henri's hot jungles. His, his paintings now hang in museums all over the world. And do you think experts call them foolish, clumsy, or monstrous? They call them works of art by an old man, by a one-time toll collector, by one of the most gifted self-taught artists in history, Henri Rousseau. Hello, my name's Bethan, and I'm an educator at the National Gallery. As you can see today, we're not in the National Gallery, we're in my house. And in today's video, we're going to be exploring a painting by the artist Henri Rousseau called Surprised. This painting is of a jungle scene, and we're going to be using it to create our own jungle collages. And this is something you're going to be making at home. Henri Rousseau created his painting in 1891. And he said he took inspiration from visits to jungles in Mexico. It wasn't until after he died that we found out Henri Rousseau, he never even left Paris. So he never saw a real jungle or even wild animals. So how did he come up with all these fantastic jungle scenes? Well, he used his imagination. He visited botanical gardens in Paris. He even used plants around his own home or even picture books to inspire him. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using our imaginations and things we can find around the home to create our own pieces of artwork. Henri Rousseau was a self-taught artist and had no formal training. So today you don't need to be an expert to take part in this making activity. It's about having fun and being creative at home together. Materials you might need include paper and any collage materials. This could be magazines or old newspapers you have lying around the house. You'll need scissors and glue and also some coloured pencils for drawing. You can also work in any size. You could work in A4 as I have, or you could go much bigger if you wanted to. Before we get started, let's take a look at the painting. Henri Rousseau has captured a tropical storm. We see a tiger crouching in the undergrowth, searching for its prey. He called this painting surprised. Is it the tiger that's surprised or its prey? Or maybe it's even us. This is one of my favourite paintings at the National Gallery because the way that Henri Rousseau has used colour, we can see more greens than we can count in this painting. We can also see many different stripes. We can see stripes on the tiger, on his fur and in his whiskers. We can see stripes in the landscape, on the leaves and the trees. We can also see stripes in the sky with the lightning zigzagging across it and also the way the rain is falling down. For step one, we're going to be collecting and making our collage materials. You can use newspapers or magazines you have around the house, or we can have a go at creating our own collage material. For this, we can work in the same way as Henri Rousseau. We can use plain or coloured paper and make sketches over the top. We can use what we have around the house. We can use houseplants for inspiration. Or maybe you could sketch while looking out the window. Remember, there's no wrong or right way of doing this. It's about having fun and being creative. Imagine we're creating our own small samples for collaging, mixing and matching colours and patterns and building up our designs to create our final collage later on. 
If you look closely at the painting, can we investigate the different types of lines that he's been using? Where can we see stripes? On the tiger's fur? On his whiskers? Can we see them on the leaves and trees? Can we see the lines in the lightning in the sky and the rain falling down? Test out how your pencils work. Can you push softly? Can you push really hard to get a nice dark mark on your paper? Remember, there's no wrong or right way of drawing. It's just about experimenting and having fun. For step two, we're going to be using our found and made collage materials to construct the background of our collage. I find it best to tear up the paper and arrange on your sheet and then stick down. Try arranging them in different directions to create movement and texture. Remember, we're not recreating Henri Rousseau's jungle scene, we're creating our own. So maybe you can imagine we're zooming in on a detail of his that you like, or even just use your imagination. It's really up to you. When you've finished collecting and making your collage materials, it's now time to start constructing your piece. At this point, I like to tear the different pieces that I've created to make different sizes and shapes. I've just used coloured pencil and found images, but you could use paint, you could use coloured pens, any material that you have around the house. When you're happy with some of the placement of your collage material, you can start to stick them down and build up the different textures. What I love about Omri Russo's painting is, unlike many landscapes, we don't clearly see a foreground and background. He uses quite a childlike approach in layering the different leaves and textures, which I think is really exciting and we can create quite easily ourselves. When I've finished the base part of my collage, what I can do is look around and see if I can see any gaps that are missing or look around for areas that are perhaps too light and need some extra tones or patterns over the top. Remember, we're creating a jungle, so we want to have lots of colour and texture. You can also think about adding strips in different directions to suggest in the branch of a tree or it could be a plant growing. You could even tear up much smaller pieces. It's really up to you how many different colours and tones and pieces of paper you'd like to add. Now you've completed your background, you can move on to step three. What we're going to do now is cut out more detailed jungle leaves to build up over the top of our background. Can you imagine we're walking through Ori Russo's jungle? Can we find leaves we'd like to use in our own work? Can we find leaves with curved edges or spiky edges? Can you choose an outline to recreate using paper? When you're cutting out your jungle leaves, why not try folding your piece of paper in half and then you can cut out a symmetrical shape. What you can do is cut along the fold of your piece of paper and you can either sketch your design on first or just cut straight away with your, with your scissors and following round try and cut your shape in one continuous cut or line. You can find it's helpful to turn your paper rather than your scissors and remember we're not going to cut through the fold on our piece of paper. When you reach the end, you can open out your shape like this. You can also reuse your stencil and cut around the outside of here to create a second shape. For step four, you can complete your collage by sticking down and arranging all the jungle leaves you've created. Think about where they might go on your design. What might overlap? What colours go where? 
Again, we're going to think about how people are going to explore this picture you've created. Are we going to have different leaves blowing across the scene? You might even try adding in your own tiger or even another wild animal hidden somewhere in the bushes. When you've finished cutting out all your jungle leaves, you can now start to arrange them back on top of your collage. It can be helpful to lay out your pieces first so that you can see how they look and you can always move them around rather than having to stick them down. Experiment with different placement of your collage pieces and see how they fit together. When you're happy with the placement of your shapes, you can then start to glue them down to complete your collage. When you've finished your jungle collage, why not try adding in a pouncing tiger like we see in Ori Russo's painting, prowling through the jungle, or even some other jungle creatures. Thank you so much for watching this video.